You're about to listen to a podcast from the Firearms Radio Network. For more, visit firearmsradio.net. Welcome to the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Review Podcast, Episode 507. This show is brought to you by VZ Grips and Walker Defense. In this show, I have a long awaited Dusk 19 review. We probably will talk about a Supreme Double Stack 1911. I'm calling it the 3822. A new 10 millimeter and a simple 511 pocket cutter. As you may know, we showcase guns, gear, anything else you might be interested in. We do our best to evaluate products from an unbiased and honest perspective. I'm Chad Wallace, and the only other host you get tonight is Tony Simon. <laughs> Take it Ooh. away, Tony. Hey. Our sponsor is VZ Grips. VZ Grips has been manufacturing handgun grips since 2003. With a reputation for quality, consistency, and innovation, top-tier manufacturers choose VZ Grips. They come in a variety of styles, patterns, colors, and a manufacturer from proprietary G10 micarta carbon fiber or polymer. Available from varying degrees of texture, VZ Grips offers a wide range of grips for all different firearms types. Made in the USA, VZ Grips gives you the grip you can count on. Feature grip of the week, Operator 2 for the Colt Cobra. I don't know if these come in dirty olive. But they should. <laughs> Check well, VZ Grips out at VZGrips.com. Coupon code GGR15 gets 15% off handgun and rifle grips. VZGrips.com. All right. So if anybody knows, that was my horrible impersonation of Rusty. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the best thing is I put the Colt Cobra grips in here for Rusty. And he's not even here. <laughs> he's in I'm the like, chat. Son of a gun, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get, man. I know. Next time, just do one for Buckmaster. Uh, was was it a Buckmark? And he'll be here. Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> then he'll then he'll say whatever something. gun he doesn't have. Yeah, so he'll figure out what he doesn't have, and then he'll be like, "Oh, I need some of those to buy his VC grips for him." So, Tony. <laughs> I'm I'm going to say that I didn't do anything in firearms because, you know, it happened to be a holiday thing. And so, you know how that goes. Should we let Rusty in? I mean, he's probably driving or something. Let's see if we, we can hear him. Is he? Is okay. he? Uh, you're alive? I, I, I feel offended by that reading, Tony. <laughs> it was that good, huh? It was it was that good. <laughs> no, he didn't mess up. He didn't mess up varying, <laughs> varying degree, <Okay>. varying degree, <laughs> very, 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 varying it. degree. I was doing it and trying not to laugh as I'm doing it because I didn't want to mess up the read. Right. Yes. Uh, so w welcome in, Rusty. I know you might be here, might not. So did you do anything in firearms this week? Didn't your son? I, I did. I did. Uh, went out and took the grandsons Christmas Eve and um, went did a little raccoon hunting. Well, my oldest grandson got his first kill. That was awesome. Put the Henry Lever gun to work, and he uh, he he took that sucker out, and, and uh, then he skinned it and took it home and told his daddy he was going to eat it. So introducing people to new uh, firearms and taking game and cooking game and everything else. So it just kind of was a great Christmas present for me. Awesome. So, did, so he's a little wiser than you. He just shot it instead of tried to tried to grab hold of it or something and get bit. Well, they didn't video <laughs> me snatching it, uh, moving around <laughs> and, um, and they were all laughing because I wanted to, uh, they, they wanted to see it get all aggravated. It chewed up a couple sticks before I got over there. So we went ahead and just let him, um, let him take it. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Nice, nice, Tony. I did, as I was saying before, Rusty showed up. I didn't do anything, so <laughs> it's it's up to you. Okay, so it was hilarious. Um, when I with a friend of mine works at a, he works at a gun store, and we were having lunch. I guess um, Friday before last, and he says, "Hey." Um, Friday, I'm thinking about taking some guns out. 
Oh, it sucks. He bounced. Yep. Um, so I didn't think about taking some guns out to the range. I'm like, okay. He was like, yeah, uh, I'm going to take uh, the CZ checkmate. I'm like, okay. He says, uh, the SIG uh, P210 target that I just got. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. The CZ DWX. Yeah. All right. The, um, the Dan Wesson CZ. Yeah. Yeah. Half CZ, yeah. half and, 1911. Uh, half CZ, half 1911. Yeah. And uh, a, a SIG Legion. Um, I got some Springfield Armory. I got a 10 millimeter Springfield Armory 1911 I want to take out. And I have a uh, Smith & Wesson E-Series Scandium frame uh, 1911 that I want to take out. And uh, I have some EMPs from Springfield, a three in, three and a half inch, a four and a half inch. Um. I was like, well, I was thinking about doing the, uh, co- what, wait a minute, what am I thinking? Yeah, I'm going with you, dude. <laughs> so I, I was like, yeah, <laughs> go ahead. I was going to, I have one question. How was mm-hmm. the DWX or DFX or whatever it is? It was a lot of fun to do. Picking it up and holding it, it was perfect. Right. It's just, a, just CZ, it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> perfectly the cz grip now he had a checkmate now understand the checkmate is just as expensive and it didn't fit as well it fit my hand right but it was like okay yeah i'm holding a handgun the dwx or whatever what do you call it 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 just is perfect i shot it very well at 10 yards you know putting the rounds all together because we didn't run it because we were shooting so many different guns. So you have to get used to the trigger and the pull and everything else. And he bought like 10 guns with him. And everything was high end. There was not, I didn't fire one gun less than $1,500 a month, it seemed. Um, so I, I tried the DWX and it shot well. I mean, the sight, really nice. Uh, he had a uh, 1942. 1911 and of course it's shot like garbage because it's a 1911 from 1942 right nothing i carried one i carried a gi 1911 uh as ccw for a while they are not modern guns they don't have the sights they don't have the beaver tail they don't have the same trigger pull it is not the same it has is is giving me hammer bite and slide bite and everything else because the size of my hands but then I picked up the ultimate one, and I'll go ahead and tell you the 10 out of 10 was shooting the SIG P10, P210 target. I put 10 rounds through one hole. Oh, yeah. That does not surprise me. Uh, it opened up, I, I, I believe, about the size of a nickel. What was the hole that I did at 10 yards with that gun? And they just kept going in through that hole over and over and over again. Nice. Um, that was a good thing about that. I, I truly, any of the guns I shot, I'd want. Um, and I think one of the, the out of the park home run was the, uh, performance center. Performance in a Scandium frame, 1911 with the three. You, you look it up, it's it's 26 ounces or 23 right. ounces or something like that. And you think a 1911 with a, a three or four inch barrel, something like that would be brutal. I felt it was just perfect. Everything about it was great. Um, and I might actually contact Smith when I'm out there and try to get that brought to our events on a consistent basis. Um, I, I want 1911s at our events. And I'm starting to feel with that particular gun that the recoil wasn't so harsh that it would frighten somebody off. But if you live in a state like Jersey where you're limited to 10 rounds for now, uh, you're limited to 10 rounds and you want to make them 10 big rounds, a Scandium frame 1911 isn't a horrible way to go. So I, I, I got to shoot some really high-end guns over at uh, Classic Pistol in Pennsylvania cool range i know a lot of the people i know a few of the people working there it was it was fun had a great time ran into a guy there who had a uh what do you call that short bro mark 18 he made a mark 18 clone 
So uh, he had that there. I let one of his buddies shoot a couple 1911s and stuff. So, oh, and I shot, shot a suppressed um, Springfield Armory nine millimeter Vic, Saint Victor. Okay. I shot a Saint Victor, and also the guy had a suppressed Hellcat, and I shot that. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't like all the blowback I got from the Hellcat. It just pelted me in the face continually. Everything about that gun I hate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, from the time we shot it at the range on Shot Show at Shot Show, every time I pick up a Hellcat, it feels like garbage. Yeah. I don't like it. I hear. Um, I don't like the trigger. I don't like the recoil impulse. And I've tried. You know what I mean? Because oh, we've yeah. had our discussions about Springfield, but there is nothing about their Hellcat I like at all or I find entertaining. Yeah, I hear. You. I hear you. So. I was gonna say later in the show we have we have a pistol that your friend might be interested in. <laughs> oh, believe me, <laughs> if, if I can get them to send us one, <laughs> yes. Well, that's pretty cool. So, announcements. Bandwidth sponsors our friends over at Patriot Patch Co. Now, we got a cool new patch of the month for January. It is a abominable snowman with a. I don't know, an AUG maybe, I don't know, in some sort of off-road podcast vehicle or something with tracks on it. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Go check out their stuff. Join the Patch of the Month Club. You get cool patches, stickers, all that stuff every month. And I think in like one of the months you get like two patches. I don't know which one. There are affiliates and discount codes over on the website at firearmsinsider.tv and in the show notes. So... We appreciate you using them. You know, we get a few pennies here and there. And some of them you get really good discounts, probably better than a lot of places. So I guess I'm going to have to pretend to be Rob today. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual co-hosts and do not reflect the official policy or position of the Firearms Radio Network and or their employers. This is not legal advice, nor should it be considered as such. Viewer discretion is advised. This is especially true on live shows. (laughs) Tony's laughing like crazy. (laughs) It was great. That's pro- that's probably that better, I, I, and it's followed up by me. So, main topic is sponsored by Walker Defense Research today. Walker Defense provides shooters with the finest, most innovative, quality, tactical accessories and firearm components around. From their Nile grip panels to their Nero muzzle brakes, no details are ever left behind. Only top quality materials are used in the manufacturing process. Together, all of this gives you some of the best firearms performance around. Everything they have to offer is proudly made in the USA. Walker Defense, where American ingenuity meets bleeding edge technology. Now, our Walker Defense product of the week this week is the one slot Nile grip panels. Why? Because I found a great use for it. They, if you put one right where your thumb rests for your light, it gives you an index point. That's why I put them in here. So visit Walker Defense Research at walkerdr.com. Don't forget to use the code INSIDER15 for 15% off everything they have over at walkerdr.com. Now, since they were the main topic sponsor, that means there's a product review. And I have the Lone Wolf Arms Dusk 19 review for you. So, I'll head over there and see what I can find. Now, start this out with the simple one-liner. Ammo for this review was sponsored by our friends over at Target Bar. And as you know, they did supply the ammo for this. I also tried other ammo, but that's neither here nor then. So, so check them out. They have ammo, still decent prices, Targets, various other things over there. So, go check them out. Now, back to the Lone Wolf Arms. If you know anything about Lone Wolf Arms, they've been making Glock-compatible handguns for years now. 
They recently introduced their Desk 19 handgun. The Desk 19 is their newest generation of pistols with tons of great features added in. Dust 19 line has a bunch of different options from a stock, in quotation marks, style pistol to threaded barrels with suppressor height night sights. Lone Wolf also has various color options for the Dust 19. The one they sent out for me to review has an FDE slide and one-third co-witness sights. When I say the Dust 19 is Glock compatible, here's what I mean. The Dust 19 is compatible with G19 parts and therefore uses those style of parts. Pretty simple, but it's definitely not a G19. Yes, the size is similar, but that is about it. The Dust 19 specs are below, so features and benefits, I'll get to them later. You can find them there. However, there are some interesting features of the Dust 19. It does use a Gen 4 mag release. This gives it the ability to be reversed from side to side, plus it's slightly larger than the Gen 3 ones that are pretty tiny. So, of course, if you're left-handed, they have you covered at least for the magazine part. The Dust 19 also has Glock Gen 3 parts compatibility, uses G19 magazines. I did use a variety of mags, including it comes with two KCI mags, and all the all of them function flawlessly in the Dust 19. Uh, these are the new style KCI mags. They pretty much look identical to a Glock magazine. Just saying metal lined, metal feed lips. So they did work fine. Lone Wolf also gave the Dust 19, another reason to call it the 19, a 19 degree grip angle. Now, I'm a f big fan of the 19 degree grip angle as... This pistol points really well for me. In addition to the grip angle, the Dusk also includes both curved and straight back straps. I did leave the smaller flat one on the pistol, as my hands aren't giant like Tony's over there. If you need to mount accessories up front, they also put a standard Picatinny rail on this baby. Uh, makes it more compatible with various lights, as well as other accessories you might want to stick on there. I don't know what you would want. There's some standoff devices or Glocks or things things like that. But, you know, something to that effect. Now, Lone Wolf also took the most common aftermarket upgrades and included them on the Dust 19. Not just a few, but a whole bunch. First thing I noticed that the Dust 19 was the aggressive texture. I love aggressive textures. If you've listened, you probably recognize that. Uh, and I say mostly, and you'll get to that later. And the Dust 19 did not disappoint in that category. The textures everywhere. Grip panels, front of the grip, on the back straps. It's also on the frame where your thumb or trigger finger, you know, gas pedal section works. Now, I really like the aspect of it up front because it gives you the ability to feel where your trigger finger is when you're not shooting, you can index it right on there. It's easy to teach people. It's easy to do. And a note about the two back straps too. Inside them, they have a place for a spare 2032 battery. Uh, so for your optic, that way you can always have spare battery for that optic. It's kind of cool. I thought it was a neat added in feature. The Dust 19 also received a decent beaver tail to help with that annoying slide bite if you have large hands. It's not super long, but it is a little bit longer and better than, you know, your standard Glock style one. The grip also has a built-in magwell. Not a huge one, but better than not having one. Pretty much perfect for concealed carry it's because it's not that great. Uh, it also has a pretty good size undercut on the trigger guard to help with the higher grip. Uh, that way you also don't get the notorious Glock knuckle. Uh, you know how it is. Mounted up top on the frame is slightly extended slide release lever. Uh, it doesn't stick way out, but it gives enough to easily use. Now, lastly, the Dust 19's grip as a whole feels very compact in the hand. 
Grip is fairly short front to back and not very wide. It even fits small hands pretty easily. Uh, I think Lone Wolf did a great job designing the Dust 19's frame. Features still abound on the top slide of the Dust 19 too. Slide has front and rear manipulation serrations. <laughs> Wanted a different word there, okay? <laughs> Just so you wouldn't make fun of me, Tony. <laughs> The serrations are deep enough and sharp enough to use in any condition Mother Nature might throw at you. Texture, there's also a textured cover plate. Uh, the texture on the plate probably helps reduce glare, if nothing else. It looks good. Now, moving to the sights. Dust 19 has night vision third co-witness irons. The front sight's tritium with a green ring around it. The rear's blacked out with serrations. So in daylight, the green ring helps focus your eye on the front sight. Now, I really like the night vision sights. They work well. Now, for the kicker, Dust 19 comes cut for mounting a reflex sight with an RMR footprint. I like that Lone Wolf's using one of the industry standard footprints for optics and not using a plate system. Uh, from the factory, it has a cover plate, as mentioned. Blends nicely to the slide. Now, moving up front, the dust frame also has a spacer in it that can be removed. Spacer is for those who want to run a Gen 4 recoil system and slide, if that's something you want to do. There's zero reason to do anything with it, since this is a complete pistol. Now, the fit and finish of the dust slide is fantastic. It is nicely machined everywhere. It also fits the frame fairly tightly. Uh, this is not something I can usually say about stock clock pistols, but there's exceptions. The slide to frame fit will also help in the accuracy department. Hand cycling, the slide is smooth like butter. PVD coated on the slide should give it a long lifespan, not to mention that it looks fantastic. The only functional part left to talk about is the trigger. The Dust 19 sports a flat trigger. Flat trigger is radius on the edges, but not a lot. Therefore, the trigger face has a lot of flatness to it. Lone Wolf also put a decent wider than normal trigger safety. The trigger safety is FDE to match the slide, or if you have different colors, that's what they do on the complete pistols, while the trigger is still black. It's sharp looking. Trigger safety also operates super sm smooth and easy, uh, so much that you don't even really notice it. I've shot other pistols where you do. That's why I mentioned that. So when I tested the trigger pulls weight, it was five pounds out of the box. Uh, after a thousand rounds, it's about four and a half pounds now. <laughs> you know, I, it's kind of what I would expect. Uh, it has a decent trigger pull too, at least for a Glock style trigger. There's very little stacking. It has a clean break. A noticeable nice feature of the flat trigger is that it breaks approximately 90 degrees from the frame. And, you know, it just helps with the brakes because you're not, it. if you go past that, then it gives you a weird feel. I was happy with the Dust 19's overall trigger performance. Yeah, at four and a half pounds, it's pretty good. respectable for a carry gun. As with everything, nothing's perfect. I did have a few minor things happen during the testing. Most of the testing was done with that 124 grain CCI Blazer Brass 9mm supplied by the Target Barn. Around the 250 mark, I had a stovepipe. Figured, no big deal. Then around the 900 mark, I had another one. Now, the second one, I attribute to the gun being dirty, since I hadn't cleaned it at all yet. <laughs> you know. I, I, hey, I, I had to try it out. The trigger also started getting gritty around that same time. Like, literally, you could feel it. So I decided the gun needed cleaning, and they couldn't really hold that stovepipe against the gun itself. After that, it ran fine again. Uh, I ended up running about seven different types and bullet weights of 9mm through the Dust 19. Of course, all of them were brass cased, uh, just because that's what I had. <laughs> it functioned great with all different ammunition types. I figured that only having two out of a thousand probably says a lot about how good the Dust 19 is. Now, I really used the Dust 19. No easy days for it. I didn't drag it behind a truck, but you get it. I did shoot a steel challenge match. Uh, the gun ran way better than the shooter. <laughs> I did it with iron sights also. 
Uh, the aggressive grip really lets you get a hold on that gun and hold and helps with managing recoil. Now, since it fits G19 holsters, I had plenty on hand to use. Uh, I used an outside the waistband for steel and some drills. Uh, then I proceeded to install a red dot on it at 500 round mark. Gun still ran great. I ran some training drills using the, an inside the waistband holster. Then proceeded to shoot some dot torture drills because, you know, I wanted to torture myself. It gave me an idea how accurate the gun is and how well I do at speed with it. Well, the Dust 19 is pretty accurate, at least from what I saw. Decent trigger pull also allowed me to get some fairly quick, accurate shots. The Dust 19's grip angle, as I mentioned, is also makes it easy for me to pick up the red dot sight with it on there. The gun just shoots great and really feels good in my hands. That might be different for other people. I did also carry the Dust 19. It carries and hides nicely, but that grip texture can get to your skin after a full day of carrying it. That's the only flaw I found with the texture. Now, some people wear undershirts. I don't, so you have that. But I'd rather have a decent grip texture than have the smooth texture that feels nice on the skin since... I'm, if I want it, if I have to shoot it, I want it to work well. As mentioned, it does fit those G19 holsters, so your options are pretty much endless. Some of the previous dot torture drills were done from an inside the waistband carry holster. I have no problem carrying the Dust 19 since it is a reliable firearm or has proven to be. So if you're looking for that pistol that has a bunch of upgrades already done on it, the Lone Wolf Dust 19 could be it. Yes, it costs a little more than a stock G19, but you don't have to spend money on upgrading it, so you save in the long run. Functions great, has night sights, feels good in the hands. It really is kind of a do-all handgun, even though it, I hate to say that. Head over to Lone Wolf Arms if you want to check out the Dust 19. Now, I guess I'll, I'll let rusty in and see if he drops off again <laughs> firearms insider review key points claim to fame compact pistol with lots of options built in target market pretty much those wanting a factory compact handgun with those included upgrades now the features and benefits reflex sight ready has a built-in rmr cut does have a cover plate included includes those flat and rounded back straps with the battery holder uh it also has a stainless steel PVD coated barrel and it's a special dusk profile, which it looks a little different than a f standard barrel. Has that flat trigger, undercut trigger guard, front and rear serrations. Overall length is 6.95 inches. It has a 3.9 inch barrel. Height without sights is 4.61 inches. Non-threaded barrel height is with sights is 4.94. The reason it says with sights is because the threaded barrel versions have suppressor height sights on them. So it's going to be different. Upper width is one inch. Total width is 1.14 inches. The magwell is 1.23 inches. It's tiny built in. You don't really even notice it. Weighs 19.8 ounces without the magazine. I did notice it's a little lighter than some other guns in this class. Of course, it's 9mm, has a lone wolf arms nitride stainless steel guide rod end cap, their reversible mag release button, extended slide stop release, extended takedown lever, and those night vision third co-witness tritium front serrated rear sights. So there's a bunch of different styles and options available. You can, there's a link in the review at the firearmsinsider.tv for those. There's also what others are saying and a link to another review. Price point. They range from $649.95 to $699.95 MSRP. So if you need it now, you can check out Lone Wolf Arms or your local dealer. Now, for the rating. Pros. The ergonomics are great. Has that RMR cut. Comes with decent night sights. Has that Glock compatibility. And the grip size is pretty nice, too. Cons, they're, I'm nitpicking here. It's a couple of malfunctions over a thousand rounds, <laughs> literally a couple. And the biggest one is probably the texture can be rough when carrying it. But 
as far as that goes, I gave it a score of eight, which is great. Now, since you guys are here, you got any questions on it? Rest well, is- <clears throat> yeah, I really didn't have any questions on it because, uh, well, I think uh, their choice of magazines. What mags did you use when you had the malfunction? You were just using a bunch of different ones. So the, the thing is, remember. is when I had the malfunction, the one I don't count the second one really <laughs> as it was a KC. It was the KCI magazine. Okay, so those magazines aren't as. It doesn't have the reputation, dependability that stock block mags do. Right. Or. Okay. Doesn't it, mean they're not good. It just, they don't have the same reputation. Right, right. And of course, I understand why they're not going to buy Glock mags to put in their gun. <laughs> you know, and uh, mo- yeah, a lot a lot of guns like this come with Magpul mags. And, you know, so it's kind of a toss up. No, because I was looking at it, and it's just funny when I'm looking at the price, because people go, well, you can buy a base Glock. But I'm like, but you're not getting a base Glock with this. You're getting way more. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm not going to tell you to do it, but I, I'm trying to think, like, what would the cost be to get your Glock? Because we've got to talk Gen 5. We got to talk Gen 5 MOS right. just to get the optics cut from the factory. Right, right. Also, with Gen 5, you'll have the front front slide serrations. Yep. But then you got to add undercut. Yep. The trigger undercut. Uh, you got to add the a- extended yeah. slide release. Um, the extended mag release. Um, the the gas pedal cuts. Oh well, they're yeah, they're slight cuts, but more so texturing. You have to add stippling. Yeah. You have to get it sent out to add stippling. stippling. Uh, you have to add Favorite a diff- different trigger. I think this trigger is better than a Gen Five trigger. Now it's not a it's not some of the fancy option ones, but it's it's a mm-hmm. good it's a good trigger for the gun. Uh, you have to add night sights. There's another you know. So when you add it all up on what you have to do to an MOS Gen 5, you're getting a good deal. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. I mean, again, and from what I've been hearing from others, Gen 5 Glocks ain't slaying like they used to, like with no malfunctions. Like, I don't know if they rested on their laurels. I don't know what's going on. But before, a Glock would just run like a machine. And now I'm hearing people saying, no, they're not running like that anymore. Yeah. And, and who knows? But I I will say another thing about the Lone Wolf is is it has grown on me. <laughs> the more I shoot it, the more I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. I it it's grown on me because, you know, you get one of these and you're like you first you're like, okay, it's a Glock copy, you know, with a few minor differences. But it 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 really does shoot fairly nice. I, I mean, it's gr- it's grown on me quite a bit over the thousand rounds. Rust, Rusty, did you have something? No, I, I don't. Uh, I've looked at them, and I've got lone wolf frames and stuff, and I really like them. I, I think they go above and beyond with their texturing, and they really took an account to um, what people wanted on there instead of just doing something and that nobody wanted. So yeah. I think Lone Wolf is really, really producing some really good stuff right now. Yeah, I think I think the, the, this one, they've really stepped up their game. I like I liked their last frame. I actually did a review on it, the frame. And this is a lot. I like this one a lot more at least the, the frame wise so and and the other one was nice it just they didn't have enough texturing on the old one and various other things but yeah so that was the lone wolf dust 19 review now we'll head into the product spotlight in discussion first up cabot came out with a new gun yes cabot it's called the insurrection surprised they didn't release it on january 6th but <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh now I did find this on the Pew Dot report. They have news and guns and stuff over there, so check that out. 
MSRP on this is $5,995 plus, depending on options. It's a Cabot. That's a great deal on a Cabot. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, you know, this is their first high capacity or 1911, you know, wide body frame. Of course, you can get it in black or stainless. Uh, you can get a bunch of different things. You can get a threaded barrel, you know, flush cut and crown barrel or, you know, ported barrel, bunch of other stuff. Tritium sites, fiber optic. It comes with a fiber optic site. Uh, you can get 20 round additional magazines. Magazines are STI 2011 compatible. So there is that. Now, it's running a proprietary Cabot stainless steel double stack frame and grip. So it is their, their version, but it takes normal magazines. Uh, it has a stainless steel slide also with window cuts. So I think the window cuts are so that if you get the ported version, they don't have to cut them in and have a different version. Uh, it is 100% made in the USA. And a key point here is from domestic stainless steel, so it's not imported stainless steel, which is saying a lot. Of course, it's got their internal extractor, so it's a little better. Five-inch match grade, hand-fit stainless steel barrel and flu fluted hood cuts, uh, three-and-a-half-pound trigger from the factory, hand-blended and finished, full plasma DLC coatings or matte stainless, which means it's not coated. It's got their Cabot ledge rear sight, Cabot fiber optic front sight, weighs 42 ounces, comes with two 17-round magazines. Of course, it's made in Cabot, Pennsylvania. Basically, this thing is pretty cool. It, does, it is optics cut, uh, if that's what you're looking at, or it has an option for it. I think if you're spending this much money, I don't. You're not too worried about it, but you can get it from the factory that way. Basically, this thing's pretty, and when you think about it, if you go look up Cabot guns and the stuff they make, if you're paying twice what an STI or you know something like that or a, oh, it you're really getting a deal. <laughs> I mean, these things. We've seen their regular 1911s, and they are beautiful. And this thing, I'm sure, is exactly the same quality. Somebody else take it away. So I'm looking at this thing <clears throat> because, you know, it came out. They sent it to the usual influencers. Did they? When you're talking <laughs> about this level of gun stuff, um, because this is this is almost like a luxury item. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that's really where you are with this. And it's not a 2011, because a lot of people want to say it. It's a double stack 1911. 2011s have polymer grips. 2011s have uh, the grip part. You can actually replace the entire grip part separately, regardless of what it's made, because some people actually have those that are made of aluminum. Uh, this is an entire gun. That was made like uh, the double stack 1911s Paro Odin's used to make. Double stack 1911 that <clears throat> Rock Island still makes. And this is just done by Cabot, somebody that makes exquisite 1911s. So I think it's pretty awesome that they stepped into that arena. Um, and the cost of it is not insane that you can buy a base model and only and, and pay staccato prices. I mean, if you think about it, or you can just keep turning it up to an 11 and pay infinity prices and get all kinds of things done to it. I doubt many people are going to be running these in competitions, but if you do, uh, you're going to have an extraordinary gun. I think these fall into being work guns if you choose to make them work guns. Um, I think they'll hold up as that, but I think a lot of people will probably never run a whole bunch of rounds through them. And this will go in a case or a specially made case or in case it comes in. And that'll be in a safe. And I still laugh because this is still cheaper than a Taron Butler, uh, Sand Viper, or any of those. It was in John Wick guns. And understand that John Wick guns say they're custom, but they're not. You get them one way. 
you get them however the heck they make them at the factory <clears throat> and you just paid between five and seven thousand dollars for a gun because it was in a movie but it's not up to the quality of something from Cabot. Cabot Arms, pretty much anything, any handgun you get from them is an, an heirloom piece, like mm-hmm. right off the bat. And it's a step above the usual. It's a step of, it's probably a couple steps above a Wilson Combat, uh, above a Nighthawk Custom. Sorry, it's in that very rare era of a bunch of high end stuff. So I think it's pretty cool. Um, I think some of it's still hype, a little bit of hype, but you're paying for it. But when you get here, you're actually paying for the name. Like that's the understanding. <laughs> and, and, and and that's the thing is is it's an understanding, but at this price, it's not like you're paying a lot for the name. <laughs> you know, that's so that's what that is. And- and these are made for you. Did you talk about how long the wait is? Oh, man, no, because it doesn't say. So I don't know how long the wait is. Oh, but well, they, they've said in videos. Oh, okay. You're talking. Yeah, you're talking. I think it was like, you know, six, eight, nine, ten, twelve. Like, you wait. Like, you, you're buying this, and you're paying for it. You're putting down, you know, the little the money they want you to put down on it, which is like fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, it's a quarter or just something. To get basically, them to start building it. What yep. was that? Yeah, it's like a quarter of what the actual price is. Yeah, it's fifteen hundred bucks just to get them to start building it, and uh, you pick out everything. You can't do that with most of these guns. The only one what we just talked about this in that same league is Nighthawk Custom. And and you still got the crazy lead time. So this is something that you invest in yourself and you buy it. And um, hey, man, cool. Yeah, I, I think it's cool that they did it. I think it kind of sucks that if you live in a state like New Jersey, they only give you one 10 round magazine. Yeah, but it, yeah. it just sucks. And um, and they have their own magazine, by the way. They have their own Cicada. I mean, that's Cicada. They have their own uh, Cabot guns magazine right, right. that they developed for this. Right, right. The two seventeen rounders that it comes with are their magazines. They're not just off the shelf STI twenty eleven magazines from Checkmate or whoever makes them. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. No, that's their stuff. But they still didn't make it proprietary, which is really smart on their part. Mm-hmm. Even though their front sight is. So if my whole thing is this, go on Cabot Guns and check out their stuff. I think they did a great job with the photos uh, and the details you can pick up on these just to look at it as, as gun porn. Yeah, especially um, they have a ton of photos of these things. They even have them like taken apart so you can see, you know, you get an idea of what it, what the thing looks like taken apart, the machine work. It They're nice. They 100%. are. Yeah. Well, that is. And the, if I was. Go and, ahead. And, and and to let Cabot know, I'm coming for you at shot. And I want the silver one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want the silver one. And if, if y'all make it for us, cool. Oh, and by the way, if you get one of the first 50, it actually says inaugural on the side of the pistol for you. Nice. Nice. So. That is the Cabot Insurrection. Next up, another new gun, the Taurus, the Taurus TH10. MSRP's on this one's only $529.99. This is their new 10 millimeter double single action hammer fired <laughs> pistol, which I thought was a little odd that they were bringing out the 10 millimeter in this, but hey, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. And, of course, does have a thumb safety decocker ambi. So you got that going for you. Of course, it's in 10 millimeter. It is a full-size handgun. So I guess I better, you know, mention that it's not something small. Holds 15 rounds of 10 millimeter. Of course, drift adjustable sights. This particular one does not have an optics cut. A little disappointed there, but it's Taurus. So next week they'll bring out the optics cut version or in two weeks after they sell like five of these. <laughs> so they, they, they tend to do that has a four and a quarter inch barrel 
totaled the thing 7.8 inches long and 5.8 inches tall. It is 1.43 inches wide. It is 28 and a half ounces unloaded, of course. Uh, polymer frame, as you can probably guess, with a stainless steel slide and barrel or alloy slide stainless barrel. Does have a firing pin block safety also. I mean, it's got a manual safety. It's a curved trigger. There's not much more to say about it. it looks like a Taurus. Does have a rail on the front. You know, I I kind of like it. I'm hoping it's I'm hoping it's a good. It's one of the quality Tauruses around. That's what I'm hoping for. Looks like it might have interchangeable back straps, but you know, there's a bunch of stuff in there. I just thought it was kind of cool that it's hammer fired. I wish it was just straight single action, but didn't really tell me if I can carry it cocked and locked, but I'm guessing I can, which is nice for some people. I don't know. What do you think? I think you can carry it. I think you can carry it cocked and locked. All right. So this is this. Taurus, they're backwards as hell. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> um, it, it bothers me because they came out with these guns, right? The TH series. And they got the 45 yep, yep. and, of course, the 10. And if everybody knows, that usually happens, right? I mean, if they're going to put a 10, it's going to be out on a 45 frame. Right. So so they made it. But they also have it 9 millimeter. Mm-hmm. And it's like, Rose, it's 2023. Why are you coming out with something without an optics cut? All right, cool. You come up with the Toro because that's what they do. That's mm-hmm. what they call their ones with the optics cut and the bells and whistles. Right. Except they haven't come out with the Toro version of any of their TH series. Yeah. Guns. None of them. So it's like, what are you doing? You're selling a duty size gun. Yeah. And you'll have any of the cool stuff like a duty size gun would have. Also, understand when you're dealing with Taurus TH series. Good luck finding holsters for it unless it, it, it works with something else, you know, crosses over. Like it uses the same holster somehow as a P226 or something that's already out there. Uh, also with the sights, what sights do you get if you don't like the stock sights with it? That's the downside to buying some of this stuff from a company like Taurus. If they were, uh, <laughs> it's not if they were smart. If they were more strategic in their thinking, they would do stuff like Canik does and make sure you have like Glock sites or SIG sites or someone else's sites. So you have those options and Taurus doesn't have to make them because Taurus is a premier firearms manufacturer around the world. It's not like they're an also ran. They only seem that way here. Yeah. So to see them bumbling this like it's the early 2000s, I mean, this would be a good pistol in the early 2000s. But right now, I'm like, you're not bringing anything to the table other than a lower price 10 millimeter pistol. Yep, and it's going to be hard for me to, huh? And I think that's what they're looking at doing. I, I don't think they were looking at much else. Yeah. So congratulations, you made it an uh, inexpensive pistol that I'm going to have a problem finding any sites for or holster for. Or after or and magazines. Buy your magazines. Yeah, magazines yeah. might be hard to find. Yeah, I okay. I can see cool. that. And and a lot of people getting in ten million. I love the number of people that ain't never seen a bear in their whole life, but somehow think because if they walk their dog in the dog park, they need a gun that's able to stop grizzly bear. <laughs> you mean, know, that, that's the thing I just continually hear. It's a bear stopper. I'm like, when the heck have you seen one? I'm not. I'm. I, and the thing is, is if I'm going to where there's grizzlies and stuff like that. I'm not taking a 10 millimeter. <laughs> I'm taking something even, even larger. I'm, I'm like, no, yeah. no. And, and I've only seen a few black bears in, in my time in Oregon. We don't have any grizzlies or anything like that. And every single one I've seen was hightailing it out of there. <laughs> like, uh-huh. uh-huh. So, well, that that's my bear experience. And that is the Taurus TH10. <laughs> Next up. 511 brought out some new things. One of them is a pocket knife. It is called the Braddock, and this is the DP full. So MSRP on this is 50 bucks. You can get it in either black or, as they say, kangaroo, which is like an FDE, you know, type color. I just thought, you know, it's a halfway 
decent, you know, knife for what they're doing. It is using a D2 steel drop point blade. Uh, it has a thumb stud on it, G10 handles. The clip is reversible. It is a deep carry clip. You know, it's got a lanyard hole. <laughs> you know, I hate when they do this, though. Uh, 2.7 millimeter blade thickness. You know, it's like, no. But then it's a three and a half inch blade. So uh -huh. you, you got me there. And, yeah, and the closed length is 4.875 inches. Open length is 8.125 inches. It is a liner lock knife non-serrated it's just a simple everyday carry knife thumb stud opener it looks like it has some good jimping on top with a little curve to it so even better that was one of the things that you know i kind of liked about it besides that it's another option out there with the d2 blade i think you can, can't really go wrong with it uh, yeah and they make a smaller version so too this is the full. This is the full size version. Yeah, I went over to the five eleven over at Oxford. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And, and near me, I went to the five eleven store to see it. So I called ahead. They said they had it. Here's the sucky part. It's in a blister pack. <laughs> so you couldn't even try it out. Couldn't try it out. So I picked it up. It's very, very light though. The weight is really light. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm surprised at myself. And that's because in the blister I was pack. Carrying because I was carrying, uh, yeah, even in the blister pack. Because, you know, I have the Crudo, and yeah. it's much heavier comparatively. Uh, this is light. Um, talking to the guy there, I told him who I was and what I did and why I was trying to compare it. And he was like, well, truthfully, here. And he pulls out a bench-made bug out. And he was like, if you compare the two, it's kind of sort of the same. He was like, it's a less expensive version of it, but it, it has the same uh, handle size. Right. Uh, it has the exact same pocket clip. So it looks like the bug out we have at home. Um, and I think what they might have done is got a Chinese copy of a bug out with permission from Benchmade, obviously. Because yeah. it has the exact same looking pocket clip. Right. Or darn close, because <laughs> I was looking at them side by side. Gotcha. Um. So I checked it out. I didn't even get to feel the G10 on the side. I mean, it just really sucks that it comes in a blister pack, but it's a $50 knife. Right, right. Um, I, I don't think you're going to go bad with it. I think because of the way it's, uh, what's that finish on it? The blackened finish? The stonewashed finish, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, that black stonewash that Kershaw did. Uh, they're doing, uh, it should hold up. I only have questionable stuff. It's D2. Yeah. It's 50 bucks, bro. It is it's hilarious that the quality. This used to be a $100 knife just because of the blade steel. Now it's a $50 knife. Yeah. And if you sign up and get it right now, you get it for 10% off off their website. Yeah. Yeah. That means. So now it's a $45 knife, throw in shipping and whatever. Right. And well, mm -hmm. yeah. And Wait if a minute. You, it's free shipping over 99 bucks. So if you order All right. more stuff, which I'm sure there's. I, I like five left stuff. I mean, I mean, they have good stuff. They have some stuff that I would never buy, but they do have good stuff. I have, they just recently sent me a set of hiking boots to wear to shot show again. So, nice. so um, I'm, I'm wearing so, them right now or else I could show you, but yeah, you know, they have a bunch of good stuff over there. I've always been happy with the stuff I've gotten from them. Yeah, so they have quality stuff, and I think this is just a decent knife. Uh, I don't think everything has to be made in the fires of Asgard. No. <laughs> but it has a good steel. It has a good blade shape. It has a jimping. Liner lock? All right, cool. Yeah. It's a liner lock. Uh, it has a thumb stud on it to flip it out one hand. It has deep pocket carry, and it has a lanyard loop. It's got pretty much... Everything a basic knife should have in good blade and steel. Yep. These used to be what eight something MOV steel. They used to be yeah, you know, yeah. That, that yeah, yeah. Chinesium. The, all the Kershaws were running the eight MOV fourteen or whatever they were. Whatever. And and yeah, yeah. And D two, in my opinion, is a far better steel than those. And 
far better steel, $50 for a knife that you could probably use for two or three years. And if you never get around to sharpen it and you buy another one and you got two of them. <laughs> there you, there you so go. So I think it's a pretty decent knife to give somebody, if you're going to be that person to give somebody a knife that actually works and not give them something that's pretty much belongs in the gas station, I think it's a good move. Yeah, I, I do too. So that is the 511 Braddock DP full. We do not have any listener feedback. You can send us some if you like. So that means Tony's going to tell you about whatever he's doing next. What I'm doing next, we're going to have a giveaway coming up soon so we can help finance the trips that I'm taking in 2024. I'm putting it together. It's going to be shot show swag that nobody else has unless they didn't give it all away. Um, so I'm holding on to that and I'm trying to do that. I've got a lot going on. Hopefully next week we'll have some dates going for you uh, for diversity shoots in New Jersey throughout New Jersey, and we're going to have a good time. So if you want to help us out, donate now. Cool. DiversityShoot.com. Reach out to me at Tony at DiversityShoot.com if you want to donate. I'll give you different ways. We're on PayPal. We're on Venmo. We have Cash App, all that, and a bag of chips. If you want to follow me on social media, Simon Says Train on Instagram. The second is for everyone on Facebook. Second is for everyone. Oh, second for everyone on X. Help us out if you can. If not, just spread the word of what we're doing. Um, I'll probably put a bunch of effort in 2024 of trying to grow the IG page. Or maybe not, because uh, Instagram is just sucking for everybody, not just gun channels. And X seems to be wanting to promote you and allowing you to grow. I've grown significantly on Twitter compared to X. I mean, compared to Instagram. Yeah. So, it is what it is. So thanks. We're about to kick off, man. Listen, if you guys have been with me and been watching nine years, man, nine years next year, diversity shoots. Nine years of those things. Man, you were yep. young once. You What were you, yeah. like like 110 back was, then? <laughs> yeah, I was young once. <laughs> what, nine years ago? I was young once. <laughs> nice. Now, of course, as Tony was saying, uh, you can always check out us on Facebook and X. We're trying to grow X because Facebook and Instagram suck, <laughs> really, for reach or anything. And that's at Firearms Insider. You can also send us questions, comments, or feedback to gungearreview at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review somewhere. That helps us out for people finding us. You can also check out all the great shows on the Firearms Radio Network at firearmsradio.net. Don't forget to visit the Firearms Insider for those reviews and discount codes and affiliates and links to the podcast and everything else over there. Don't forget to check out our great sponsors. Happy New Year, and thank you for listening to the largest pound-for-pound -pound podcast on the network, and we are out. Happy New Year. Epstein still in the This podcast has been a production of the Firearms Radio Network. For more, visit firearmsradio.net. <laughs>